Hi guys and welcome back to this video series on installing and configuring Solar Management Hub. For more information go to www.centurionsolar.co.za Right, so in this video I'd like to show you how we can use the time to X percentage as well as the time to 100% to better manage the power flowing in and out of our batteries. You'll see that I'm starting this video with a very low charge battery, it's only 29%, so there's only 9% left before we get to 20%. So to simulate this, uh, here I've got an output that I can turn on and off. So son off, so this is connected to my load here. And then I also have a grid uh, son off that controls the energy going in and out of the uh, inverter. So you can see at the moment we are pulling a, a load of about 1100 odd watts, of which 800 watts is coming from the grid and the other 200 watts deficit is coming from the PV at this point in time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to disable the grid incoming power You'll see that the grid bar goes down to zero. Uh, we'll start getting a notification in the notification bar as well. And then the system also starts calculating how much time we have left before we get to the required SOC. So there's the notification popping up and you'll see that there's a warning, utility power failure. This warning would then have gone over to um, your telegram or email as well, should you have those configured. I'll leave this for the moment. Now you can see at this amount of amps, at that load watts, we roughly have 16 minutes left before we get to 20% um, state of charge. So this means that the system is calculating the, the time left to get to that SOC based on the amount of energy that is still available and left inside of the battery. So um, this is quite nice. So when you are in a load shedding scenario, you can use this uh, simply to see how much energy is left in your system so if for instance you see that your energy is dropping too quickly and you have two hours of load shedding left you can then say let's reduce the load in order to extend this uh, time so this will ensure that you get the best running times out of your battery even in a scenario where there isn't any other form of electricity available like solar to supplement that as well so with that i'm going to turn back on the power and show you how the inverse is also true where we can calculate the amount of energy or the amount of time it's going to take before the battery is back to 100 percent so i'll turn this back on you'll see one of two things is going to happen the first one is in 10 seconds time the notification is going to say right the warning was fixed the utility power failure warning is now fixed so i'm going to go ahead and clear this and then you'll hear the inverter starting to hum as we now start to go from a negative battery amps to a positive amps and you'll see that as this counts up the battery amps counting up this actually goes down so it's going to be 17 hours and it calculates every two seconds to get to the to the answer so as time goes by this will go shorter and shorter and in about 15 or so seconds time you should have a fairly good idea of how long it's going to take to charge your battery right so while this is busy happening i'll go to the settings tab and I will log on and we're gonna go into the schedule agent so this is a fairly advanced system where we can basically specify what's happening in our system at any point in time uh, we've got a very advanced scheduling system and we also have a state of charge uh, system as well so what we're doing here is we've got got 10 slots for every day so this means you can run a different schedule at 10 different slots for every single day so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simulate a standard day and I'll uh, uh, copy that across for all the days and then show you how we can do a unique day so let's say for argument's sake that um, at 6 o'clock in the morning we get up and then the system needs to go over to SPU. I'm going to update this for all of the days. Then um, let's say at uh, there we go at four o'clock in the afternoon, everybody gets home and they start making food, and it's you know the the geyser and everything else coming on. So we do not want to drain into the batteries because there might be potentially some load shedding coming. So at four o'clock, the systems go back to utility mode. Around about eleven o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night you'll see that we now have everybody has now had a bath and they are in bed so we can go back to the batteries again so we can get the maximum amount of energy from our for efficiency from our solar system but in this scenario my batteries are not enough to last me the entire night so at three o'clock in the morning they go back to utility mode again so obviously running from three o'clock in the morning oops that should be three o'clock there we go 
So from three o'clock in the morning, it'll be on utility until Tuesday morning, where we are at six o'clock, the cycle will start repeating itself. But in this uh, um, demo, on a Tuesday morning, we've got the garden services coming in in the morning early. So I do not want to go over to my batteries at six o'clock in the morning, because they might be drained and they might not have enough energy at six o'clock in the morning to sustain everything, the cutting and the, and the, the blowers and everything else that happens from six o'clock in the morning. So what I'll be doing then is for the, for the Tuesday specifically, I'm going to say only go back to batteries at one o'clock in the afternoon, right? So this means that this specific day, I'm only going to go to battery at one o'clock and I'm going to stay on utility from three o'clock in the morning until one o'clock in the next afternoon. Then from there on in, the same system then applies and we can still run the same thing. Now this is awesome for where people want to um, uh, tax the sun because the um, ESCOM recently announced that they want to tax people with solar systems as well. Now uh, uh, from uh, what we read, they are only planning to do this between the peak hours of 8 and 10 and then 4 to 6 in the evening and only Monday to Friday, which means that on a Saturday and a Sunday, I can run a different schedule uh, than what I do from a Monday to Friday as well. So this is a very nice way to effectively use your system um, in order to, to uh, calculate different times that your system can run on. And like I say, there's 10 slots for every single day that you can run on. Right, so I'm going to clear all of this and then we're going to go over to the state of charge for control. In a standard system, uh, most people run their batteries down to about 20 or 30 percent. So for this demo, I'm just going to say 30 percent and the system's going to go over to utility mode. And then because my system is set up to not charge from ESCOM, but on solar only, I can then set this to 40 percent. So this means that at night time, when the batteries reaches 30 percent, it's going to go to utility. It's going to stay at 30 percent while the grid then covers my load. And when the, the sun comes up the next morning, the sun is going to charge the system from 30 percent back up to 40% while it's still in grid mode and once the battery reaches 40% state of charge the entire system will go over to SBU or solar first. In my system I'm going to solar first uh, and uh, sorry into uh, SBU mode which is uh, solar only. So here we can just enable which one of the two we'd like to use so you can either enable state of charge for control or you can use the schedule for your control or you can use both of them. If you're using both of them, uh, you will see that the system will intelligently decide if it's if it's able to switch or not. So in the scenario we had up, uh, uh, at the top here, we said to go over to batteries at six o'clock in the morning. If we see that we need to go over at six o'clock in the morning, but this, the batteries are not charged to at least 40%, the switch will not simply not happen and you'll get a log stating that you cannot go over to uh, batteries at that point in time. Right, so with that, I'll stop this video quickly and go over to the next one where we'll be covering things like the inverter settings as well as your Telegram setup. See you shortly. Ciao.